The second step in creating a sequence diagram is to identify actors and objects. So here I've created the context. I know exactly what use scenario I'm working on. And so I want to move that to a diagram. And the context is done inside a frame. So I can add a frame to my blank diagram. Now this is really small. My sequence diagram is going to be very large. I don't know how large, but I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. And then I can go ahead and make it bigger as I go. So however big I want to start it, and then I'll extend it as needed. <clears throat> so I want to put the co I want to put the context up here in this label. And notice that that's way too small for it. So I can grab that little orange square and move it over to make it larger. And then I can put that label, that context label, right there in that corner of the frame. All right, so now I've created this frame that identifies what context I'm in. What in it specifically? Customer rents movie using search. I'm going to be even more specific here. I'm going to put DVD because there was a difference in our system between a movie, uh, between a DVD and a movie I um, rent in a streaming movie. So I want to be very specific here. Okay, customer rents the DVD. And now I'm going to add actors. So step two is to identify the actors and I'm going to be adding them here in the order that they come on the scene. And the third step is to add the lifeline. But if you look over here you can see that the actors and the objects come with a lifeline attached. And we could do them separately and add a lifeline, but this is the simplest way to do it is to bring them on board. So you're really going to get them both at the same time. So you're really going to be doing step two and three at the same time. So here I want to add an actor, and this is going to be my external customer. So I want to add, so I add the customer and I want to label it so I can just double click to be able to type on it a customer. Um, all right, so this is just a specific customer and I give it a name. The name is going to be directly associated with the customer that's internal to the system. And if I look at my list, I'm going to need the interface. So when they very first log on, uh, they're really going to inter access the interface object. Okay, so here we get this interface that is specifically created when they log on. All right, so this interface will just create a brand new interface object when they log on. So notice how I'm putting it when I uh, put it down here where I can request, right? When they log when they first log on, which is really open the open the app, they're really asking for displaying the object. So here and we can set this, so we took the type here, this is an interface object, and I'm going to leave a little bit of space here because I'm going to have messages going back and forth here, and I want to be able to have room to write those messages. And then, so we have this customer login, and we have people authenticate, so we're going to need a people object. So I'm going to go ahead and add people. Now the people is a list of people, so it won't be a brand new object that's created. It's going to be an object that already exists, so it's going to be at the very top and not a new, a new one. And notice that for the lifelines we can extend them and we will extend them as needed. So as we move down these will all, these will extend the lifeline from when they're created or when the scenario starts. Interface created here, people already existed but the scenario started here, and then the lifeline will go all the way to the end. And we go through here and we just simply add them in the order that they show up. So we have we already now we have a customer object. Remember, I use this for my external customer and this for my internal when I was writing that. So now I need to have an internal customer, and this customer already existed, right? To be able to log in, they had to already be in the system. So we're not talking about adding a new customer. So they existed when the scenario started. So the type is customer. That's the class, the type of the object, but we want to give it a name because remember the two times we give it a name is when we have two objects of the same class so we can tell them apart and when an 
external customer is being represented internally and we want them to have the same name so we can see that we're talking about the same entity. So here is the name is a customer and matches this external customer. This is simply the internal representation of that particular customer. And I'm going to make it wider just so it can hold that label without looking messy. Okay, and you just do that. You go through the list and find what needs to be added. The interface is already there. We'll just reuse the same one. And then we need a movie inventory object. And there I've added a movie inventory object. I suggest leaving quite a bit of space so you can put messages between here. It's easier to have the space to work with than it is to be too squishy and those messages get pretty cumbersome. And then we go back and we say, okay, we already have an interface, we already have the customer interface, movie inventory, so nothing new here till we get down to we need a movie info object. And I'm going to pause now and just simply go ahead and add these because you see the process to go through the list and pick out which ones need to be added and add them. And you add them in the order that, they, that you come across them in the scenario. So this is what it looks like after I've added the objects and actors. Uh, and a couple of things I noticed as I was going, I realized that I needed a transaction and that I had missed that when I was going through the list right up here. A customer adds a transaction. And so if I go back after the people and a customer exists, I need to add a transaction. Notice that this would be creating a new transaction object, so I put it down there below. I don't know exactly where this is going to start until I get the message that initially creates it, but I put it lower so I would make sure I was aware of that. When I did that, I had to slide everything over, so you want to try to be careful to catch everything as you go. It just means less movement. And here you see I'm deciding between, well, the movie item already existed in the system when this scenario began, but the line item in that transaction did not, and so I put it down low. Here you see um, an external actor that is not is non-human and this is that payment system and I use the same object with a lifeline uh, right I use that exact same thing but then I specify that this is an actor at a payment system notice it doesn't have the colon that identifies it as a class type and it has that label actor and then again as I added each one as I went through the list and added each one I was very I tried to be careful to go in the order that they showed up and to choose did this exist did that to be shipped list exist before the scenario started then it goes across the top if it was something new a new object that was created during the scenario then it goes down lower and we'll position those as we need it and then the last thing you can do is you can go ahead and if you want you can start extending those lifelines uh, but that will you can either do that now or later to extend them however long you think this scenario might turn out to be. Extend those lifelines to the end of the scenario. And that is how you accomplish step two and three, identifying the actors and the objects and adding the lifelines.